Hello, love. Welcome to Feeling Fridays here on the Libran Key. These are messages for the highest and the greatest good of the empath collective and the empath journey here on Mama Gaia. If this video has found you or you have found it, know that there is something here for you. That is always the intention that I put into these messages. This is the last installment of a series of Feeling Fridays connected to the November update message, which I will link up here, okay? It's still relevant. Um, from what Archangel Sandalfon is telling me, he is here with us, bringing through the spirit of the sequoia and the redwood trees. So he showed me right at the beginning, going into this message, into the meditation, the giant redwood and the sequoia trees. And I saw them starting from a very, very small seed within the hollow of a trunk of one of the trees and then shooting up, shooting my gaze upward, right, into this tree and feeling into how immense this tree is and how this tree feels energetically. Um, and so he wants us to do a little exercise here. I invite you to do this with me. There wasn't a, and he really just wants me to get right into the cards in true Archangel Sandalphon fashion. He wants us to get grounded about this. And he's really emphasizing here I invite you to close your eyes and imagine this with me as an exercise. We're doing this as an exercise, okay? Of imagining what it would be like to be this tree, to be this sequoia, to be this redwood. The sequoia tree is the largest tree that we know here on Mama Gaia. The difference between the redwood and the sequoia is that the sequoia is quite immense in its circumference in the size of its trunk, while being at the same time very tall. And also the redwood, really significant here because the redwood is, it's slender, it's more slender compared to the sequoia, but it's very tall as well, okay? And there's an emphasis here on the red, the root, the root chakra, our blood, and on that note, I am going to bring the crystals that, the energies that we're working with here, with the crystals here. Immediately, I was shown black tourmaline. This is a polished piece of black tourmaline. This is assisting us in getting grounded. Citrine, this natural citrine as well. This is connected to our joy, our light, and our light work. Okay. Also, channeling light is how he's showing it to me as well. And this piece of red jasper connected to the red in the redwood. Okay, bringing these energies into this reading now for you, right? If they are not available to you, you can always tune into the frequency of these crystals. Just look at the colors of those, right? And you can just tune into the color of these particular crystals. Working with their color therapy and working with their energy. So I invite you now to do this. Just close your eyes for a moment here. You can put your hand on your heart, you can put your hand on your belly, whatever feels right for you, and imagine what it would be like to be a sequoia tree. Feel the pull simultaneously down through your feet, this giant rooting system into Mama Gaia, and at the same time, this tethering up into the heavens, in to the spiritual realm. Archangel Sandalphon showing me the tree having its own energetic centers, very much like our pillar of light and our chakra system. And aligning it to the energy of this tree. He wants to bring through an energy here of really grounding our light, grounding spiritual energies, Grounding the mission work is what I'm hearing. Grounding the soul purpose. Grounding the soul mission. Grounding the soul gifts. This energy of grounding. Grounding your light. That's it. He wants to keep it really simple. 
I'm going to be asking through the Starseed Oracle for messages of support. He wants to bring through really practical tips here, okay? And Pamela's mini deck, the Rider Waite Smith. Pamela's genius. I'm going to start with the Starseed Oracle. He really wants us to hold on to this feeling of being grounded. Very grounded in his space and in, in our space, in the space around us, feeling rooted, feeling very centered. Okay. I'm feeling it especially in I'm feeling it especially in my solar plexus right now and into the sacral, but I'm feeling it very, very much in the solar plexus, this grounding energy coming through. It's almost like he's showing me channeling light what it would be like to channel light and how the feeling of it for many of us is actually not what we would imagine it to be, but the practice of it actually feels very different. And this has to do with the fact that energies are shifting here on Mama Gaia and the way we are doing things, essentially we're not doing things the same anymore. There was a message that had come through on that a little while ago and I'm going to post that here as well. Making a note of that. The shift in energies is significant. Okay, so we've got inner earth coming out here. You'll survive this. New solutions and beginnings. And we've got loosen your grip at the bottom of the deck. Loosen your grip at the bottom of the deck. Coping mechanisms, density, addiction, let God in. So he wants to acknowledge with this particular card where we're being really stubborn, scared, clinging to outdated beliefs, limiting beliefs, especially around our spirituality, especially about what it means to be a light worker, what it means to be a star seed, what it means to be an empath, what it means to be a healer. What is it that you're clinging to? What is it we're all clinging to, okay? When I say you, I mean me too, all right? This is all of us. Letting God in. This is about really trusting. He's, he's showing me that in trusting, when you, when you ground and when you root and when you really focus on staying grounded in your energy, it is much easier. There's a weight that sort of gets lifted. This is what's so paradoxical about it and beautiful at the same time. So the idea that we, when we get grounded, he's showing me like there's a preconception here around getting grounded where we think it means heavy and dense, where it's this density factor, right? Like here on the cards. He's... He's showing me this isn't about feeling heavy. This is about feeling anchored or tethered, knowing that it's like I'm hearing I'm I'm hearing belay on, belay off. For any of you who've done mountain climbing or rock climbing, belay on, belay off. This idea that you know you have the security underneath you. You are somehow tethered to Mother Earth because you were born and incarnated into Mother Earth, and you are of her. So this connection needs to be consistently nurtured. Keeps on, I'm going to bring the red jasper in for this. This energy needs to be consistently nurtured on an ongoing daily basis, even by the minute he's showing me constantly throughout your day. This is how we make the shifts. This is how we make the shifts here on Mama Gaia. By tethering this energy into her, this inner earth. I'm going to read from the book on this. He's showing me that really the inner earth is being used here as an analogy to how deep we must go to tether this energy, okay? New solutions. That's the energy that's coming through with regard to this new energy, this new frequency, this new spiritual frequency realm you know, that's being anchored right now. The shift that's taking place. Yeah, I'm feeling called to just read the excerpt from this because if there's a question here, I feel like it 
it somehow applies here. What can you do to shift your energy or your outlook? That's the inquiry for this card. What can you do to shift your energy or your outlook? Okay. Inner Earth is also known as Agartha, right? Believed to be a hidden subterranean world within the planet itself. Many ancient cultures mention it in their stories. It's said that some of the beings of ancient lost lands, like Lumuria, Atlantis, and Aryavarta went there. Hindu and Celtic lore mention caves and entrances to underground worlds. Tibetan Buddhism refers to the secret mystical city of Shambhala, which is thought to be located in the Himalayas. Many have searched for inner earth in the physical world, but without success. So the mystery continues. Is it a place that exists in the physical or on another, le on another level of consciousness? How Archangel Sandophon is bringing this through to me right now is it is an energetic frequency for which you attune to, and then you access this realm through that energetic frequency. There's a lot of protection he's showing me around inner earth, and that's deliberate. That's a confirmation possibly for some of you too. Some of us have accessed the inner earth through the dream realm. Even if you're not super familiar with it. Because I'm not, I'm, this is crazy. So, so yeah, so Archangel Sandalphon is showing me where I've accessed in my dreams inner earth. And he's saying you'll sense that. I'm feeling it resonate big time in my solar plexus. So perhaps, how is this speaking to you? How is, when you hear inner earth, have you ever dreamt of a place where you're now getting this confirmation where you're like, I think that's where it was. So you access this through the astral, you access this through your dream time, and it is very, very real in every way. And he's showing me the crossover between the realm and the physical and how that can manifest even in our day-to-day -day where we see where we see examples or confirmations of inner earth in our own day-to-day -day reality. He's showing me stones and rock formations connected to inner earth, almost like access points to inner earth. Okay. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to move too much onto it because that's a whole other thing to get into. Okay. Let me read the rest of this. There are solutions beyond what you can perceive. Um, he's directing me to this. If you find yourself facing an obstacle or feeling stuck and have no idea what to do, you're being reassured that there is a way out. You're you will survive this and things will work out. Try something you normally wouldn't do. And, he, and he's bringing me back to this exercise. Try this exercise. Um, yeah. You need to do something first to shift your focus so you can receive help. Helpful people, signs from the universe, and support in both unexpected and expected ways. They are on their way to you, okay? So there's something in doing this as a practice is how he's showing this to me that gets you in resonance with your own energy. Again, it gets you to trust more, to trust yourself more, to let go and let God in. All right. All right. So I'm going to ask now through Pamela's genius, the mini Rider Waite Smith here, messages for soul support for the empath collective for the Elsh collective because it all applies in the empath journey here on Mama Gaia. Really asking us to get grounded right now, to feel this energy of simultaneously drawing down our light, getting grounded, stretching up, getting grounded, okay? As a practice that we can do in meditation. This is all in supporting us 
with regard to the energy for this month as we close out the month of November. It's actually also showing me if you've been doing the work of getting in touch with your energetic signature, your own energy, doing the meditations, right? Showing me you grounding that energy into Mama Gaia as a way to almost, I'm hearing, make a pact with her. Like to renew your connection to her. He's showing me the star card and this idea of this had come through in a completely different message. I think it was one of the life path number reading messages where I was being reminded again of the star card being about baptism. Okay. And this energy of renewal. And it's almost like you connecting to Mama Gaia in this way is like a baptism. It's a renewal of your connection to her. I'm seeing an umbilical cord connecting us to her core. Like we have an umbilical cord that connects us to her core. And back again, she's connected to us too, right? This is the going into the cave energy, just like the inner earth card here. Going, And remember that the hermit in this image is depicted as being in isolation in the mountains. There's something about the mountains here. If you feel connected to inner earth, then you feel you are an inner earth star seed for that matter, or, you know, earth star seed. Because remember, Mama Gaia is galactic too, right? There's a whole other realm here, though, that's very much connected to cosmic energies, okay? That is actually within Mama Gaia herself. If you feel connected to that, that's a confirmation right here of this. And this energy of, this energy of, this exercise is a way for you to connect to that too. Like to this feeling that you're connected to that family. Like I'm hearing Earth Star and through the Earth Star chakra, right? Oh, that's a lot coming out there. Okay. All right. So we've got the moon at the bottom of the deck in reverse. I'm going to get to that in a second. Okay, so we got quite a few coming out here. I feel like these are all going to be specific messages. We've got Ten of Swords, Page of Cups, Ten of Cups. Look at that. The Knights of Cups and the High Priestess. And then we've got this moon card coming out in reverse. There is... Okay. He's acknowledging the healing that has been done. This, this might be a very specific message for some of you here, okay? Ending out the cycle here of betrayal and the emotional fulfillment that comes through the processing of the work. He wants to acknowledge all the emotional work that the Empath Collective has been doing through this Page of Cups and this Knight of Cups, because there's a progression here that's happened very swiftly. He's also saying that this is happening presently as well. Going into the cave, going into yourself to heal from energies of betrayal, energies of being, I'm hearing stabbed in the back, taken for granted, okay? Also, mental, I'm hearing the word mental manipulation here at the hands of another for the, for the purpose of control, for the purpose of keeping you small. This is also a collective energy. He wants to acknowledge that, that many of us are moving through these energies, understanding where we've been deceived, understanding where perhaps we have been tricked in the mental body, where our mind is deliberately being provoked, mishandled is what I'm hearing. That's actually the word he wants to bring here. Not Because remember, we talked about this before with manipulation and the true meaning of manipulation, okay? He specifically wants to say manipulation in the mishandled sense. And he's directing me here to speech, to how you've been spoken to, words that have been twisted, lies, your words being thrown back at you, twisted back at you. 
and how there's an energy here of you not actually getting caught up in the emotional aspect of it, which is a really beautiful thing, and actually coming from a place of curiosity, like, wow, interesting. Interesting that that person would want to do that or say that to me. Where is that coming from? Why is that happening? And acknowledging, too, that that has nothing to do with you. It's got absolutely nothing to do with you. Emotionally, coming from a really open space in your heart, like a child, where I'm hearing it's like water off your back. It's like water off your back. He really wants to acknowledge the healing that we've all been doing around that and the emotional fulfillment that comes with that and progressing from this page of cups to this knight of cups where you are very much in alignment with love, the frequency of love, self-love especially, and a very deep understanding of how broken things are. And that in you succumbing to the emotion of that, you're only contributing more to the imbalances currently taking place. Ending with this high priestess, this mastery. I'm hearing mastery of the emotional body, but the intuition as well, and being able to discern between what you feel and what you are emoting and what you feel emotionally versus what truly is coming through your intuition. So we're basically going from, look at that, yeah. And this one wanted to pop out too as I pulled that deck. I'll get to those in a second. Going from this energy of coming out of this deceit, right? This is when, when the moon comes up reverse, it's almost like we, we're battling some kind of an illusion here, right? There's a presence of an illusion here where we're like, we're kind of aware. We're sort of like, something's not right here, but we're not really able to pinpoint it yet, okay? Coming out of these energies, right? Of not feeling grounded of feeling at a standstill, of having to go deeper, deeper into your intuitive body for this beautiful divine feminine energy to come through of really truly trusting in your intuition, of being still, of being calm. He really wants to end here on the energy of this too. This is the integration he's showing me of understanding better the energy of duality. And he wants to bring it back to the redwood and the sequoia of this simultaneous tethering where you are the balance. You are the balance. It comes back to this heart space. You are the balance. And that it is through simple exercises like this, practical practices is what he's saying to me, that we are able to ground our light even more, ground the spiritual even more, integrate even more the lessons it's like when we do that, it supports Mama Gaia and she in turn supports us. It helps with her ascension when we do those things. And then simultaneously, she supports us. It's a symbiotic relationship is how he's showing it to me. Okay, I'm seeing the lemnus gate. I'm seeing this energy of like the back and forth, the back and forth, the back and forth. Okay. I'm hearing reinventing the wheel. This energy, this ebb and flow. Okay. I'm going to end it there. Thank you, Archangel Sandalphon, for being here with us. I thank you for being here with me, for sharing your time and your energy here with me. I'm also seeing... I'm seeing the... I'm seeing the, the image of... Oh my God, and I can't remember what this is called now because it's escaping me, but three circles overlapping each other. I'm hearing Trinity. There's a, there's a unifying aspect of this that brings the two together. That's significant as well. That could be something specific for some of you here, okay, for it to be coming through like that. Yeah, and he just wants me to close out with the fact that, close out with the fact that we're also working with these three crystals again, okay, this trifecta. Okay. Thank you for being here. I'm sending you so much love wherever you are. In love and liberation, always.